Hello and welcome to our Friday webinar. We are back on with Dr. Tom Tolley for Ask the Vet. Hey, Dr. Tolley, welcome. <laughs> How's your day going? Um, Good. You know, well, well let's, let's see, uh, we'll have some people, well, people are still logging in. Um, so today's Friday. I was curious, um, how much of your day is like, you know, you see your patients, you, you do your teaching, all the follow-up paperwork, like, you know, when you, when you're like update your patient files and stuff, is that, is that a certain portion of your day? Like, uh, oh yeah. I, I mean, <clears throat> and, and it's, and it's kind of evolved over the years from when we had the, uh, the written, uh, yeah. records and discharge summaries. And now it's all, uh, electronic, uh, and, and uh, fortunately, uh, here uh, between uh, having the students and we have interns and residents that do quite a bit of it, and I have to give uh, credit there. Um, but uh, then, then there's uh, a number of cases, of course, that I have to to go through. So it, it could be a lot worse um, for me, um, but uh, thankfully, um, it's it's as it's at a level that that um, I'm, it's not too overwhelming, but it it definitely it definitely could be. But um, there's other uh, aspects here at the university uh, that I have to uh, uh, I'm involved with that take take quite a bit of time. Uh, this is one of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I have, I have uh, other doctors that are working right now uh, with patients and things of this nature, but also uh, we have uh, the, you know, a number of meetings on a, on a regular basis, um, whether it's, a, you know, regarding uh, students or teaching or uh, within the department itself. So uh, that can be uh, a little little overbearing but uh for the most part um uh it, it, it's it's a it's a it's a good mix and then also uh the teaching uh yeah. within the classroom uh we have uh, uh and and that and dependent oh. upon what time of year it can be uh more ours is usually spring um uh, right after new year's is when we we have our course and so uh, New Year's Day, the next time we get back, uh, which is usually two or three days after New Year's, um, we start. So, wow, yeah. you're great. Are you grading papers and uh, students? Uh, well, <clears throat> you know, uh, right uh, now it's all electronic. So, um, uh, you know, I deal with the the grades, and if there's any questions about questions. Uh, then uh, handle that, but uh, most of the, you know, putting to putting together the examinations and then um, it, it's all online now, uh, and uh, it's 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 a totally different uh, world as far as uh, do it all through computers and and the students uh, pretty much know what their grades are as soon as they turn them in. That's how oh, quick wow. it, it's yeah. that quick, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating. Yeah. We'll have to, you will have to do it where you walk us through, you know, when you have a, the students that that's, you know, how they, how they um, transform during the, the academic year. And when they get to that point where they're actually with the uh, bird patients, like, yeah. Because yeah. that must be a fascinating journey for them. Well, it, it, it is. And, and it, it, it's, a, it's a fascinating journey for me because I'm learning every day, <clears throat> every day um, through, through this webinar, uh, I learn. Uh, through the questions and what people people have to uh, to offer, and uh, as as avian medicine uh, continues to evolve, and and how far we've come, uh, Laura, over the last uh, I, you know since I've been practicing for 36, 35 years, to see how far it's come uh, in that time, and we just had our conference in Nashville and uh, learning uh, many new things uh, through that uh, conference. Um, you know, the, the, the computer technology and the software and what we can do um, is every day, uh, I can tell you it's change and it's always going to change and, and we're, uh, and it's, it's no different than it's always been, but um, you have to embrace it. You have to embrace it and, and it, uh, helps us in, in many aspects of our life and it helps us 
uh, with the you know treating the patients and 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 also teaching and uh, look at the webinar. This is the, the technology that we're able to do and go and have this webinar with participants all over the world uh, in real time. It's, it's, it's just fantastic. Nice. All right. Well, speaking of the webinar, let's get these, uh, these questions going here. Uh, a reminder to our, to our, the people who are joining us today, our viewers, that if you have a question to use the Q&A button, uh, not the chat feature. And um, let's see, I have one out the door for you, Dr. Tolley. Uh, All right, let's let's get started on this lovely day. All right, so Kathy um, has a uh, says my my BB parrot uh, uh, Gigio is two years old and he has, he's itchy all over. So she's afraid to spray him with any kind of spray. She doesn't know what to do. Um, she uh, acknowledges that she needs to take him to vet, but wanted to ask what your thoughts were. So her bird eats seeds and some fruit, some apples, bananas is all he likes. Uh, can't get him eat veggies. Um, She's sprayed his cage and cleaned it really good with lice and mite spray, but haven't seen anything. So any help would be appreciated. Yeah, um, <clears throat> this is it, it, this is always something that that's concerning. I always always say um, there's there's uh, kind of uh, you know one 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 in particular <clears throat> uh, that uh, I guess. Uh, if if the animal is showing one one particular uh, clinical sign, um, the animals don't have symptoms. Uh, by the way, and, unless they talk to you, and, and I think I may have mentioned this before, and 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 our patients, they they possibly can tell you, hey doc, my leg hurts, you know. Well, uh, you know, uh, but uh, animals have clinical signs, and and so if you see, see you know, see the animal uh, uh, kind of uh, you know preening or uh, apparently, well, I think it may be itching. Uh, I always say that that's one thing that people really can can feel almost if, if an animal appears to to be itching and they, they'll take it to to the veterinarian uh, at, at that point. Uh, that's one thing that they just can't because all of a sudden they feel itchy themselves, you know. Uh, but uh, with this in mind, what you have to, to think about is that birds are fastidious in their grooming behavior. Um, and so there's, there's grooming, of course, and, and they can be very uh, somewhat aggressive in their grooming uh, without doing any feather damage whatsoever. Um, they'll remove feathers and, and sometimes it's, it's intermittent uh, depending on what time of year it is or if they're molting at that, that particular time more so than they, they are. Uh, what, what I always, always look for is I look for feather quality. Uh, what's the feather quality on the bird that's doing these actions? Is it, is it does the feathers look good? Um, uh, it, are there any, any uh, appearances that the feathers are damaged or that there's uh, areas of feather loss? Um, if, if the feather, the feather quality looks good, then, then that kind of leans me toward uh, normal grooming. Uh, also, <clears throat> what you can, you can look, look at, you can see if there's any evidence of external parasites. Um, many times with uh, uh, mites or any, any type of external parasite, lice, um, you can actually see those uh, or even the eggs for lice uh, on bird feathers. Um, and then you, you also can look at the skin to see if there's any, any evidence of any type of uh, um, abnormality, uh, redness, or, or if there's any irritation, inflammation that's on the skin. Um, and the bird skin is very thin. And if there is an issue, you can many times see that. So, so that's, that's what I look for. If everything looks good, then for the most part, then what you're looking at is that, uh, that it's, it's a grooming behavior. Um, now, if, if it looks like, uh, again, that the bird is, 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 is really um, picking at itself or, or it seems to be bothered as it's grooming. And then there may be some, some other 
some other issue. Um, and this goes into the possibility of one, uh, that it may be uh, within the, the, the feathers themselves. Uh, and if you have uh, at the base of the feathers of the follicle, there may be uh, an infectious uh, 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 process. There can be an infection in the base of the feathers that you won't see on the skin, but it may be irritating the bird there. But in most cases with that, you'll have the feathers falling out um, and that you can actually culture uh, some of those, those feathers to see if you can find a bacteria that may be causing it. But again, if the feathers aren't falling out, it would be more of a grooming behavior. Then, then also you go into the, the aspect of uh, uh, one thing that we studied here was hypersensitivity. If there, the bird was, uh, you know, had a allergic, was allergic to something that it was eating then there may be a, an issue where it was irritated and uh, the, the skin was itchy or something of this nature and the bird was aggressively uh, grooming. Uh, so usually with that, I recommend trying to look at different, uh, try a different diet, for instance. Maybe it's something that it's eating and that you would try a different diet to see if that, that may be. Uh, a, a possibility of, of reducing um, the aggressive grooming behavior. But if the feathers are good, again, the skin's nice, then you're looking at somewhat of uh, a normal <clears throat> activity with very fastidious grooming to keep those feathers smooth. Uh, that's normal behavior. Um, but if it looks like it's bothering the bird or there is aggressive grooming, it could be something uh, along the lines of a hypersensitivity, which would be difficult to diagnose, but we look at trying to look at the environment and nutrition on that. Okay. And Dr. Tully, what about that? They mentioned um, spraying the cage really good with mite and lice spray. Is that something that? You know, really, if you're looking at most of your, your birds, if you're looking at most of your birds in, in the, um, say uh, uh, companion birds and in, in, uh, within, within the house, um, the chances of exposure to mice or lights are, are very, it, it's minimal to none. And so uh, for the, you know, they, they have little discs, little, they used to have little discs to put on the side of the cage for mites or something. I don't recommend doing that. Um, and then also spraying the cage for mice or, I mean, mice, mites or lots. Don't go that way. <laughs> yeah, mice are spraying the cage. Yeah, mice are another problem. But uh, I would say uh, that wouldn't be uh, uh, helpful uh, either. Um, sunlight, uh, trying to get direct sunlight. Uh, having the birds uh, 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 spray the birds with water. That's the only thing that I would recommend uh, as far as, as far as just to, as far as natural, uh, to spray the birds with uh, water um, and uh, to have them bathe or what have you. That I think is, is beneficial and, and to have a, a good diet. Uh, uh, again, you're not getting much nutrition with fruits um, and uh, a lot of sugar in there. You may have some fiber, but not a lot of vitamins, minerals, and, and, and fruits. Uh, you'll have more in vegetables, but again, uh, you'd want to look at uh, to have, again, a base diet of pellets, um, and then we talked about the foraging diet, the nutriberries, things of this nature, and then also you have uh, you, you want a, a, a few seeds in there uh, to, to, to kind of round it out. And if you, if you definitely, if you wanted some kind of a, a nutritional supplementation as far as vitamin or minerals, uh, there are some uh, avian vitamins uh, that uh, you should, you, you know, that you can utilize, but make sure that it's, um, you use the, the directions as it states on the, on the, on the product. 
Okay. Uh, the next question is from Frank, and this is in regards to a pro, uh, probiotics. So um, they wanted to know, um, they have a 19 year old cockatiel that it, um, suggest, the vet suggested as a treatment for the poop sticking on the cloaca, which they think is ca caused by dehydration, um, is how often should the probiotic aviculture two plus be dosed? That's the 19 year old cockatiel dried poop on the cloaca. Well, and, and it's been, um, the bird has been on baked crushed egg shell shells for several months. So is that play a part in it? Is that, what was that last statement? It's been on the, crushed. The bird also, they mentioned that the bird also um, had been on baked crushed egg shells for okay. several months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a calcium supplement. Um, the, the, uh, and again, as far as the cockatiel, you could do that. Um, and, the, and then of course, uh, the cockatiels that I've had over the years, uh, uh, cuddle bones work, work very well as a calcium supplement. So um, e either um, would be, be fine as it goes as far as calcium supplementation. Um, as far as a probiotic supplement, um, it's a 19 year old cockatiel. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like that there should be uh, a probiotic, and we've talked about that on uh, this, this series uh, a few times, but if the, um, the probiotic I would use as it, it states, and I do not see any issue, and I don't you would see any problem with um, actually administering that on a on a daily basis without any uh, with any of the of the probiotic products. Um, I mean, you're just adding uh, theoretically, and I'm, I'm not that familiar with the product that you mentioned, but um, beneficial bacteria, and so it's not something that you're going to um, overwhelm the, the bird by uh, administering it um, on a daily basis. Okay, all right. Um, okay. Next question is from Gloria. Um, it says, recent avian uh, vet suggested children's Benadryl, 12.5 um, uh, milligrams slash five milligrams unflavored may help with feather destructive behavior. Um, the vet has found this can sometimes help uh, in picking birds, not always. Have you heard anything on this? Um, and already have you suggested to your patients? So Benadryl for parrots for picking. Well, uh, yes, and there's dosages for, for Benadryl and, and, we've, uh, and we've used it over the years for different, uh, um, different uh, I guess, conditions and different diagnoses as it relates to to possible allergic reactions, no, no different than what you would look for in a, in a human. Um, and, and so uh, the, if it's dosed correctly um, and uh, the, you know, uh, then, it, then it would be given uh, with that in mind based on what the, uh, her veterinarian saw and thought. Uh, that it may may help if he believes that, as we talked about hypersensitivity reactions earlier, that this question kind of uh, segues into that um, uh, earlier discussion uh, that we had. And I think that that's somewhat the basis of, uh, based on the exam, uh, what the, the presenta presenting clinical signs were uh, of the bird and what the, um, the, the diagnoses that uh, that veterinarian thought that it would be uh, the possibility of uh, this particular drug and what it does, what may help. So, so that's, what's, uh, uh, that's what's the basis of the, of the um, prescri you know, prescribing this treatment. Okay. I yeah. imagine that's something that, I mean, you want to you want to definitely get a vet's um, dosage amount for Benadryl because oh well <clears throat> well it's just like any other treatment and we've talked about that too Laura you know that uh, there's all the medications remember the I show you 
the the when they printed the uh, the physician's desk reference, the PDR, and uh, I showed you that when they printed it, it, it was that thick. And you go, well, wow. what's in the physician's desk reference? Well, that's all of the drugs that physicians, uh, human doctors uh, use, um, and there's kind of somewhat similar in, in veterinary medicine that that's been uh, approved for for uh, animals, um, but uh, most of that information in there is, it, you know, it's the drugs, but uh, quite a bit of it is the side effects of those drugs. And that's mm -hmm. why um, I always say, and, and I've said it before um, on, you know, on this, this webinar that <clears throat> we prescribe something when the good outweighs the bad because all medications have side effects. And I say, just listen to the commercials on TV. You know, they talk about one good thing it does, but then at the end they talk about yeah. 15 side effects that it has. And some of them are pretty bad and, uh, or worse than others. But so it's only when that good outweighs all of those bad that we, you know, or the possibility of having those that we prescribe it. And, and, and it's just like with this case, it appears that based on the, the patient's uh, presentation, what it's doing, what they've, they were able to examine and, and find out that, um, that this, this was uh, a, a, um, a possible treatment. Uh, that would um, really reduce what the could, what the bird was doing, or possibly resolve it, and and so um, that would definitely to get back to your question, uh, you know, it would definitely be based on a a doctor's recommendation at the dose that that bird. So it could be. Yeah, these are these are situations when you have behavioral issues that you and, and when you're talking about a vet, veterinary behaviorist, you have behavior issues with your birds. Um, a veterinary behaviorist will go out six months and follow to see how the birds responding, how you know, are you getting the treatments, what's happening with the bird? And that's the one, you know. And, and so if anything is not occurring or, you know, it's not the treatment, you don't have a treatment response or a minimal treatment response, or there's a side effect or, you know, the, the, the doctor understands what should be going on and what would be, ah, that's a bad sign. You want to, we want to stop that at this time, or we want to, you know, re, redose, you know, try to, reformulate that dose or what have you. So uh, no, you always want to try to do, you always want to do this under, under uh, supervised uh, conditions. Okay. All right. And then um, Tony had a question on what are your thoughts on, on using a harness, like for taking your bird outdoors? Do you have any oh, recommend? Any? Oh, you know, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> I recommend it highly um the the a body harness on the birds and the and the sooner that you can uh get the bird to adjust to that 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 is what i would uh recommend uh, nothing on the leg or anything of that nature but something on the body in which the leash would attach directly to the harness itself um, usually in the mid pectoral in the mid chest area and um and sometimes they have little, uh, you can place where you can put uh, paper towels to serve as somewhat of a diaper or something of that, you know, something like that. And I, I, I recommend that um, highly because that way you have a guarantee that the bird will not fly away or fly down. And if you're in with people and they all have dogs that, um, that it, it could be a, a, a bad situation. Even if the bird can't fly, then, then but a dog can just run over there and, and grab it quickly and, and it's all over. Um, and then also 
uh, if it's windy and the bird has some lift in the wings and all of a sudden it's in a, it, it gets in a tree, I always say, remember, the bird doesn't have to fly 100 feet in the air. All it has to do is get out of your reach. Yeah. And then once it's in a tree that's 60 foot high, it'll climb all the way to the top. You, yeah. you see? And so it's just not about the bird flying. It's about just getting out of reach. So the harnesses, you know, I, uh, I, I, I recommend very much so. Yeah. Well, I know there some... are a lot of good products out there. I don't know if you have any, any thoughts on that, Laura. I, my only thought is that uh, I, I, back in the day when, when harnesses, when I first saw them, I, I, I tried to put one on my bird, but I realized I was stressing them out tremendously. So recommendations for when you kind of have to ease off on putting a heart, you know, like kind of get them acclimated or mm -hmm. would you recommend for a bird that might be really phobic of a harness because something coming at them they're not familiar with, like telling the bird or any tips for that or, you know. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> that that's that's why, you know, and, 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 and again, you're emphasizing a fantastic point. Um, I, I don't recommend trying to, uh, you know, you will wear a harness type thing. I always want the bird to, to be comfortable mm -hmm. with whatever you're trying to do with the bird. And if it's a, a situation where the bird just isn't comfortable with the harness, then by no means don't, don't push, push that. It's just not, it's just not a good thing. That's just like, um, if I'm, if I'm giving my bird a uh, shower with a spray bottle, you yeah. know, I've had birds that with the spray bottle say more, more, you know, and just, you know, shake. And then others just, just, it's just like, get away from me. And so I'm not going to keep spraying it if, if the bird isn't, doesn't like it. And so and what I mentioned the, the earlier, if the bird is, is younger yeah. then getting it used to it, you have a better chance of, of many times, um, you know, can't teach an old dog new tricks, can't teach an old bird new tricks. Um, that is more the rule than the exception. Um, but there are exceptions. And so you can do this and then hopefully you could just like we talk about behavior training, operant behavior training and, and uh, giving treats, possibly you can utilize treat uh, and operant training to get the bird to wear the collar, but yeah. I mean the, uh, the, 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 the harness and, and, uh, and so puts it on and wears it, you know, have a treat uh with that and and so uh that's one thing that you could try with a bird that is somewhat reluctant to to use operant uh behavior training in that that manner excellent all right um and then the next question comes from bill uh they have a cockatiel who is healthy and happy but occasionally will drink so much water that his droppings are almost all water I think he is playing in his water and that is a, in a hooded feeder that's not a dish. Is this healthy or could it cause kidney problems and how would you stop it? Well, I, I don't think, you know, with how you're describing it um, and that, that's, uh, again, we just get so, so many good questions. Yeah. You know, I mean, I enjoy, the, I, I just enjoy the, the questions on this. Um, but as, as described, just drinking the water, you know, intermittently where the, you know, the, the droppings get um, a little loose, that I don't believe you're going to have any, any damage within the body in, in that, that manner. I don't think it's going to cause any any issues with the with the the kidneys or 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 anything else for that matter um the the one one question that you you always you know look at i don't know how old you know and it, the bird may be playing in the water um it 
in is to see if this is a, something that um, is becomes more common than just intermittent because there are some diseases where um, the the birds will drink a lot of water and and so they call that poly polydipsia polydipsia where they drink a lot of water and then they urinate a lot because they have their their they're kind of overhydrated, and so it's polyuria, polydipsia, polyuria, um, and and uh, usually they say it's PUPD, and uh, I think that's kind of backwards because you don't, you know, you wouldn't urinate before you drink, so I think it should be PDPU personally, <laughs> but we we digress a little bit there, <laughs> but nonetheless, I you know. It, it, I, as it is now, I don't believe that there's a, a, an issue, but I, I think that um, in, in something like this, that uh, if you want to make sure that everything's fine, that that's where you have, where I say you look inside the bird and that you, you do a uh, plasma biochemistry panel, looking at the blood glucose, looking at the electrolytes, uh, looking at the, um, the, the uric acid, which is the, uh, the, the byproduct, the protein that, uh, uh, that you do, they'll have with the uh, after. Um, and so, so this is what you'd look at. Okay. Um, so, oh, got another one for you. Uh, Nan has a blue fronted Amazon that was recently on Bay Trail after a gram stain test. So her doctor recommended that I give uh, yogurt um, after the antibiotics uh, were finished and her, uh, and her recheck. So she hates the yogurt and is resistant to give in even a tiny bit. So any suggestions or alternatives? Um, well, this is, um, this is something where we go back to kind of the probiotic situation, you know, kind of the probiotic topic. And basically that's, I think, what the, the veterinarian, your veterinarian was trying to, to promote uh, by giving the yogurt to, to possibly help with the uh, general environment within the GI tract um, to, to uh, try to help with the maintaining populations of good bacteria. Mm -hmm. Now, with the, it, it, so it doesn't like the yogurt. And this gets back to like the harness, uh, gets back to like the spraying the bird. Um, you're not, you know, you can, you can give it to it, uh, catch the bird, give it to it with a, uh, or administer with a um, syringe. Um, but uh, that, that again is, is uh, problematic. Um, and then stressful. Now, what, you know, if you don't do anything, then um, I don't think that uh, for, for the most part that it's going to be uh, an issue if you don't give it yogurt. Um, but if you do want to try to help, you can get some of the uh, probiotic supplements that are made for birds, some of them that you can put in the, the water uh, and then others are kind of a gel that you can, you can catch and, and give them a little bit of that. And again, they're, they're made for birds. They're probiotics for birds. And I think that that's something that, again, that your veterinarian was looking to, to, to go down that, that path. Um, and so that's, that's something that you can do, but I wouldn't want to force force the yogurt on the bird if it isn't going to eat it. Uh, and in the end, if you don't do anything, I really don't think it's going to be, you're going to have any problem um, if you don't do anything. Okay. I'm imagining Amazons because I, my, you know, they like what you're eating sometimes. So I imagine if you're having some yogurt in your own little yogurt cup, hey. you have a separate one yeah, for that. So give me that yogurt. <laughs> yeah, you can't have any. You can't have any. Oh, I want some. I want some though. Oh, it's very good too. 
they'll uh, yeah just give them their own yogurt cup to hold in the end. <laughs> yeah yeah well that's 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 an option you know you can you can eat it say like ah you know yeah. all right so, um so cindy uh, wants to know if you've heard of harmful reactions to using animax for a conyers ears um her bird has been scratching the ears and then yawning and the vet um, a prescribed Animax with a two week call to follow up from a tech. Um, so here's a little, here's some backstory too. Is my bird, uh, the bird began excessive drinking, urination for one to two days after this started and the results were not good. What, what do you have to say about Animax? Um, she's thinking that uh, I, I think she may have ingested it from grooming. I never got to talk to the vet, only told to come in if I was concerned. So. Yeah, that's, you know, uh, that's a good question. Um, as, as, as again, I'm going to emphasize they all are, and I want to thank everybody for that. Um, we, we haven't, um, uh, you know, I, I haven't used that, um, but it, it, it's a point that if you, are prescribed a medication for your bird. Um, and, um, it's in, and again, like I said, the veterinarian that's working uh, in, in treating uh, the patient um, is utilizing all the information they have to develop a treatment plan and prescribe a medication. So based on that, uh, your veterinarian uh, felt like this was the the uh, the treatment that would uh, be the best to try to resolve the issue, but as I go back to the PDR mm -hmm. and what is in there, as most medications are, you have side effects. If you have or you believe the bird, and this is this is again something that you need to to remember. If you're, you're given a medication and you feel like that there is something that is, is questionable, unusual, or you just don't feel is, is uh, 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 right, it's, it's abnormal uh, behavior, um, uh, bird's not eating, it's more depressed, um, you know, it seems like it's drinking something is different that just isn't right then you need to to call your doctor your veterinarian um and 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 discontinue the use right away discon don't don't give it again and then call the veterinarian and and let them know and then reassess what's going on so um, although I don't have any experience using this particular product, that's what they felt was the best, but you saw something that was, nah, it's just not right. Mm -hmm. Then stop, don't give any more. And then till you talk to the veterinarian and, and get a new game plan based on what it is now. It may not be anything. It's like, oh, this is this is uh, you know not related. Related. We need to see the the bird in again. Stop it. We'll give something else or what have you. But it, that's all needs to be uh, assessed after you if you you know make what you know and provide the information on what's going on. Yeah. Um, and then this one is from Pat uh, with a Timna African Gray that shreds his feathers, um, no longer has wing or tail feathers and body feathers look like, a, like they're a baby chick. Um, she says the, the Gray has lots of toys um, and the ones that they, they like and she sprays, uh, sprays it with aloe vera solution every other day. The vet said it was a hormonal problem. And so then they did the shots every three weeks for six months, but it didn't do much. So uh, they saw that uh, about the collars for birds. So uh, what are your suggestions? Um, <clears throat> you know, at this, at this, at this point, um, let's say that you've had, uh, it appears that you've been um, utilizing a, uh, a very good veterinarian to, to get a, 
an assessment of the bird's overall health. Um, and at this point, what I'm what I'm hearing is that it's been determined to be <clears throat> uh, it, it, it's the pot, and I'm not going to say it's been determined to be, but it is it is highly likely that it's somewhat of a of a behavioral issue. Um, it may or may not be be associated with with um, a, a real disease condition that is hard to diagnose. And so you say, well, what's a real disease condition that's hard to diagnose? Hormonal, for one. Um, and another is hypersensitivity, if there's a hypersensitivity uh, issue. Um, and we, we can't diagnose that. Or if there's some kind of an imbalance in the vitamin, the mineral, uh, calcium, uh, vitamin D, uh, many times, uh, we uh, what we're we're looking at is that uh, um, the sun, getting the birds out in the sun, and uh, making sure that they uh, they have an adequate vitamin D level. That this may be an effect, um, and so these are all just some medical issues that may be associated with behavior. There could be behavior issue here. Um, and we all have, uh, many of us are aware of birds that have been severe uh, in their feather destructive behavior. And then they go to a new house or a new environment and then whoop, it's all over. You know, it's, it's, it's just like, it's a new bird. Um, and, and, and so um, that, that is a, a, a possibility. Um, now, <clears throat> As I, you know, it, there's, there's, um, there's not a overall uh, recommendation of what you, you can do as far as, as I've mentioned before, the diet, but getting the bird out, uh, making sure that it gets unfiltered sunlight. Uh, you, you know, of course, you want to make sure it's not too hot um, when the bird's out. And then uh, when you're looking at some of the behavior issues, uh, there's, there's veterinary behaviorists and that's what we go to. So, um, in a nutshell, um, I, I, I picture the bird in my mind. I see it. I see it. No, no primaries or secondaries, no tail feathers. It looks like a little, I, I see the bird and I know that it's frustrating um, and it, it's not only frustrating for you, but it's frustrating for me, uh, it, it, you know, your, your, your veterinarian, because we want to see the bird, um, in it's, it's beautiful feather condition. Um, and, and, uh, and it's, it's one of the most difficult, uh, presentations we have to, to work through. So I want to commend you on everything you're trying to do. I don't believe that the aloe is helping in, uh, in any way. Um, and uh, I don't know that it's hurting, but I just only recommend spraying of water on the, uh, on the birds if, you're, if, if it has a bath or something of that nature. Um, so um, that's the, the only thing. I don't know if there's any residue or that would be associated with that spray that may complicate uh, the matters. And that's why it's just water is, is, is the best, uh, I believe. Birds like water uh, for the most part. They like to bathe and get, you know, my little Senegal takes his little bath, you know, and I, and I give him a shower. And, uh, but they do it on their own too. And they, and it really, it helps with the feathers, but I can't say enough about sunlight. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, getting the birds out, um, and if you can get, get some unfiltered sunlight, I think it's, it's, it's very beneficial. Oh, wow. How about a bath and then dry in the sun? That's my, my, my birdies to love. Yeah, there you go. Oh, very bath and sunlight. <laughs> Magical. Very, very much so. Very much so. But, but good question. Good oh. question. Yeah. And then, so Gloria wanted your opinion on, on a supplement. Um, if you're familiar with the introduction of, uh, you have to bear with me if I pronounce this right. Um, 
the introduction of an NACN acetyl uh, cysteine to birds for the anoxic benefits. Um, if you dilute it with saline solution, her, the avian vet recommended it. So hopefully I said that appropriately, but um, some acronyms in there. I, I don't, I don't, I, 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 I don't, I can't. Um, Let me spell it. it. Is it, is it? Uh, N-A-C and then N-A-C-E-T-Y-L and then C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E. Okay, Let, let's try that. Let's try that one more time. N-A-C. Okay. Yeah, that's all caps. Uh, and then capital N-A-C-E-T-Y-L. Uh huh. Then the next word is C Y S T S C Y S T E I N E. Yeah. Uh, and and so the question uh, was was what um, on that for the antioxidant benefits. Um, as antioxidant benefits. Yeah. Um, don't know. Don't, don't know. know. No, no, no. It's, you know, and again, stump the vet. <laughs> All right, we did that. We'll have to, we'll have to take a deeper dive. Right, but I, I, I appreciate the question, but yeah, you, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not aware of, uh, you know, where acetylcysteine, it's basically acetylcysteine, um, but possibly I'm just not aware of that. Okay. But yeah. Sorry. Maybe, maybe you can talk about that at the next exotics con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, you know, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to do some digging on that. Maybe okay. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll discuss that next time. You know, start off with this is what I found with the cysteine yeah. and antioxidant effects. All right. You know, like I said, I learned something every day. So yeah, there you go. All right. So stay tuned. Sorry about that, Gloria. We'll. we'll We'll try to yes, get a yes, answer yes. on that later. Yeah. Um, okay, so Judith has a 19-year-old Quaker parakeet or parrot um, that likes to sit in late afternoon sun in front of a large window. So I wanted, um, oh, so they're getting a new Hurricane Florida windows. Will this affect her? Do they need a bird light instead? Um, they're, okay, so it's it's it likes this uh, you know in this area it likes it now they're getting some different windows uh, it sounds like her i'm going to guess hurricane resistant windows uh-huh hurricane resistant windows so so maybe yeah, a little like thicker and uh and, and i will say that it it would if uh if she's talking about uh ubv ubv light uh in kind of a kind of a natural uh, sunlight with the birds, you can get it for reptiles similar to birds. Um, I I would uh, say that if you get that, it's not going to hurt by any stretch of the imagination, and would be helpful. Anytime you get these lights um, and uh, and and have it. Um, uh, inside over the bird uh there's a couple of things that you need to remember or th at least three mm -hmm. one that it needs to be at a height uh where the bird is to be effective so it's not like it can be at the ceiling and i'm down here and i'm getting the effect there is a specific distance that this light is effective and usually at 12, 24 inches, something like that. Um, and and uh, number two, um, on these lights, they'll work as long as a fluorescent light will work. It'll be um, the light up. But what you have to remember is that the effectiveness of the U UBV the ultraviolet spectrum that that light is pro providing has a has a a limited a limited of time of effect. So you it, it so this is this is you know you see uh, best buy date or expiration date. 
for you, you know, uh, lighting with uh, ultraviolet lighting um, that's provided in a fluorescent bulb or what have you, that is what you have to follow to a T. You have to be specific on that. So if it says it's only good for this long, even though it lights up, that's how long it is. Um, otherwise, you're not you know, getting the, the spectrum. So you need to remember that uh, when you have those, those type of lights. The distance and the, and the, uh, the expiration on that, how long that they are effective for. Even though they light up, mm -hmm. they're only effective for, for uh, a certain period to provide the ultraviolet light that you, you want. Okay. And then uh, let's see here. Oh, just going back to that real quick. Um, is there like amount of time a day that a bird should be under a UV light? Is it something that you follow? No, no, not not necessarily, um, but it would be <clears throat> similar to uh, you, you know, about the same time as the daylight length. I mean, they don't have to be the whole time. Mm -hmm. I mean, any is more than most, most of the birds are getting inside. Um, and, and, and there's birds that have lived their entire life without it. Yeah. But I think that this is something that, um, that we can look at as uh, possibly promoting better health that we're learning about as we learn and uh, that it may be uh, possibly involved in some of the behavioral issues of some of these birds with feather destructive behavior. Um, and uh, we don't have the scientific, the evidence-based information to, to validate that, those thoughts, but that's something that we need to investigate more to, to see. And um, it's not going to hurt, uh, hurt the, uh, the bird, but uh, there is a distinct possibility that it, it could be beneficial. Uh, and so it doesn't have to be on if, the, if the, the light cycle, we just went through the autumnal equinox, right? A yeah. couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, it's fall, y'all. Uh, <laughs> so so it, 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 you know, 12, 12 hours of dark, 12 hours of light. Um, we don't have to necessarily have that, but it can be, um, uh, you know, a good portion of the day. You can have it on, um, but it would just be like a regular uh, light. Now, you know, I mentioned the length and I mentioned the time frame. So you brought, you know, back to the, the subject is you, it has to be direct. It can't be uh, like through glass or plexiglass. You, with the lighting, you know, you know cage bars are fine because you have the, the light coming through, but uh, any type of glass or what have you is going to reduce the amount of ultraviolet light that that bird receives. So you wanna try to have as much of the uh, direct lighting as possible. So thank you. Okay. Uh, and then JR, let's see, they have, um, as a little more knowledgeable person who tries to help bird owners online, have continually noticed one reoccurring concern. So they want to, why do people have such a hard time accepting new studies slash science slash methodology, et cetera, that can now be proven to be correct, such as benefit, um, uh, correct as beneficial, such as natural wood perches versus Dow perches and other basic concepts. Mm -hmm. So why do you think people are hesitant to follow the research and the <clears throat> well I, take on that? Because it's human nature not to change. You know, uh, humans don't like change. Animals don't like change. Our animals don't like change. We don't like change. We like to, to kind of continue uh, as we have always have. Um, and so that's, it's just in our nature not to, to, to accept change. Um, uh, and, and, and also uh, uh, in, 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 in science and evidence-based uh, 
research, meaning that you have used uh, um, the, you've done everything that you can to, to provide information um, that is, is uh, uh, scientifically as valid as, as possible. Nothing's mm -hmm. perfect but uh, that you're utilizing everything. It's just not hearsay. It's just not, oh, I had this case and this happened. So this is the most wonderful thing in the world. And then, um, you know, uh, it, and so, you know, it's, it's just difficult for, for, for uh, people to change. And so that's why um, you, you have, uh, science uh, and, and you have evidence and you, you, you try to do investigations um, to give validity to what you, you say, this is better than this. And then somebody says, well, well, you know, that's your opinion. Well, you want to try to back that opinion up with, with something that is objective and that's objective information is is, is hopefully what you're looking for, you know, saying, well, we thought it was better, but guess what? The old way is still the best. You know, we said Dawn dishwashing. Well, you know, Dawn, to get the, well, let's use microbes and that, that can eat the oil and do better. And it's, you know, you know we're not using to, to remove oil from birds. Well, we tried that, but guess what? The dawn, the dawn worked better. You see, you know, so that's a that's an interesting, uh, uh, you know, that's a good question. I mean, that's a uh, an interesting one, but um, that's what we continue <clears throat> we continue to to work to build uh, on on our um, what we have in our objective data. To, to move forward with, with what uh, the recommendations are. Um, and so that's, that's what we, we try to do. And um, sometimes we're more successful than others, but um, we'll continue to do that to advance. And, 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 and I, I would say that we have advanced in the last 35, 36 years that I've been doing it and, yeah. uh, and look forward to building on that. Yeah, I think that's, you know, it's kind of across the board, like, you know, when I was back in my childhood, like, the, you know, you gave your dog, like, maybe an old towel to lay on in the backyard. And now you got the Tempur-Pedic dog beds that, you know, and you find out like, oh, my gosh, they love that comfort. And, you know, that and say with birds, like the Dow perches, you know, it, not the only perch in town, that shouldn't be the only perch in the cage, because they, they got to work that foot health. And, and right. And, and, and it's why, you know, why do, you know, sandpaper perches, you know, you know, put sandpaper over the dowels for the budgies. And, and, and so, you know, and, and so you look and you go like, well, how much of their, their toe, their, their yeah. claws actually touch the dowel? Well, their whole foot's on the sandpaper. Who wants to, to have bare feet on, on aggregate concrete, you know, I mean, yeah. that hurts <laughs> I mean, and it causes you know and so you know it, it, it the effectiveness of the the sandpaper purchase to to do that it, it, you know it was a good thought but i don't think anybody ever looked at the anatomy of the bird to see how well that would actually work you know the the, the claws have to grow to extreme lengths to actually touch the perch in the first place so Anyway, um, and, 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 and these are, you know, things that uh, hopefully we, as we, as we move forward, that, um, you know, we'll see that, well, they recommended that back in 2021, and it's 2031, and it's like, wow, they were, you know, it, hopefully we, we move on from here, you know, and, and that's what's exciting, and that's, that's why I like to, that's why I love what I do is because I always have questions and, 
and if somebody has a, a seemingly good idea, I want to, I want to prove it's, it, you know, prove it's right, you know, uh, give some, you know, like objectivity to it to say, yes, you know, if somebody had this idea and had recommended it and, 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 and it works, it's great, you know, we, we move forward. But on the other hand, I've, I've also had that where there's been recommendations that tried to say oh i'm excited about this and then find out that no it really doesn't work you know wow. and uh and and we have that it's not only with bird owners it's with veterinarians also and doctors you know oh i'm not going to change i like yeah. this no <laughs> it's just, you know it's with everybody so so my frustration i you know i i'm I, I'm more understanding to bird owners than I am with veterinarians, you know, but uh, I also understand human nature and, and, uh, and, and, uh, you know, so. It's good insight. Yeah. There we go. That was a, that was yeah, a, that's a great. That's provocative and um, yeah. question to end on today. So thank yeah. you for that question, dear. Um, so hey, I'm going to give us a, a sneak peek at what we've got coming up in October for our webinars. Um, we, we're back with uh, Lisa Bono on October 1st, and she's doing the gray way, keeping it clean, tips and techniques for maintaining a healthy environment for your bird. Um, that'll be next Friday. And then um, let's see here, before we go, I have to announce our winner for today's giveaway. Uh -huh. um, winner. Yeah, that is going to, and as I do that, I'm going to play the promotional video of what they're going to receive, as well as another bag of their bird's choice of the favorite food. So Dr. Tolley, um, we're going to, we're going to go out on this little video here. Um, thank you for some wonderful insight again um, on these important questions that we just every week is, or every time around with you, it's just, the questions are just phenomenal. So thank yes, everybody for that. They are. <laughs> thank and, and thank you so much, uh, Laura, for moderating and all the questions. It's been wonderful. Uh, and, uh, and look forward to, to next time. And, uh, and again, thank Lefebvre for uh, sponsoring this webinar uh, so we can uh, learn about more about birds. So, so have a great, great weekend. All right, here we go. So right. this, is, uh, this is what um, our winner today, who is Tracy O. Tracy, um, you are going to be receiving this. Um, let me see, let me do my share screen. Hopefully this works. Uh, okay, here we go. All right. See, you fell up berries. <laughs> Talking about good nutrition, good feather health, all the stuff we talked about earlier. You got it all in these little bite-sized pieces for your bird. Um, so, uh, Hopefully your bird will enjoy that. I mean, that looks tempting right there, all those wonderful ingredients. I must be hungry. It must be uh, okay. <laughs> California time, lunchtime here. <laughs> so Dr. Tolley, I uh, can't wait to be on again with you for the next Ask the Vet. Um, and I think Halloween, maybe. That's right. We'll have to dress up. Let's see if we ah, can get there you go. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody. Uh, okay. In the meantime, everyone have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe and all the best to you and your flock. Bye. Bye.